Good morning, everybody. Uh, and I hope you're keeping well uh, and safe at the moment. Um, thank you to those who came along, took part in our uh, Zoom midweek last night, and we'll be doing more of that over the next few weeks. I'll send out the link again at the beginning of next week. I uh, would love to see more people join us for that as we gather together to study uh, God's Word uh, and Mark's Gospel. Uh, we're continuing to go through the, the daily devotions in Mark as well and, and following through on our reading plan. And so I'm going to read to you this morning from uh, Mark 1 uh, and verses uh, 21 to 34. And they went into Capernaum and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as the scribes. And immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed. So they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. When is the last time you were astonished or amazed? Uh, there have been fairly uh, astonishing, I suppose, events uh, in this last year. Uh, and uh, even in this last couple of weeks, we've witnessed astonishing events on the news. Um, I guess that's bad astonishment. We're astonished that this could ever possibly happen. But there's also, of course, good astonishment whenever you're just astonished that somebody is capable of doing something that that just seems miraculous i guess that seems totally out of uh, our uh, realm of ability maybe when when you know, when usain bolt uh, runs 100 meters and breaks a world record and people are astonished at his uh, his ability or when some footballer scores a wonder goal uh, and, and people just look at each other with their mouths open in astonishment. When's the last time you were astonished or amazed? It's a regular feature of Jesus' early ministry. We re read it in this passage. The people are astonished at him. They're astonished, first of all, at his teaching, uh, at the things that he says. And Mark as we've said, Mark doesn't go into an awful lot of detail on Jesus' teaching. Matthew and Luke go into much more detail on that. Uh, but what he does tell us is that the people who heard Jesus teach were astonished uh, at the, the, the kinds of things he was saying and the, the authority with which he was saying them, that he was teaching on his own authority. He wasn't depending on... Uh, all sorts of different authors and writers and scribes and so on to back up what he was saying. He was teaching them on his own authority. And that's that's hallmarked throughout the Gospels when Jesus says something like, I tell you or I say to you. He's teaching on his own authority. And that authority then is backed up whenever uh, in the episode in the synagogue, a man who is possessed by an evil spirit comes in and Jesus commands the evil spirit not just to come out of him, but to keep quiet about who Jesus really is. And the evil spirit obeys him. 
a teaching with authority. And the thing is, whenever you're astonished by something, when you're amazed by something, you tell people. You might tell them on social media. Uh, I know, you know, I'm sure last week, whenever people were watching the scenes from Washington DC, lots of stuff was going around on, on social media saying, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Um, people are astonished and they, they tell one another about what's going on. Well, people were astonished and amazed at Jesus. And as a result, they told other people about him. And Mark tells us his fame spread throughout Galilee. Fame is a, <clears throat> is a two-edged sword, isn't it? Fame is something that an awful lot of people in our uh, society seek. In our celebrity culture, people want uh, to be famous just for being famous. Uh, and that's what happens with, with Jesus. His fame spreads rapidly. People start to hear about him. People want to know more about him. The whole city gathers at his door. But it's a very much a double-edged sword for Jesus because that's not what he wants. He doesn't want to be famous because he does astonishing things or even because he says astonishing things. He doesn't want to be mere uh, curiosity value, mere entertainment, if you like, for these people. He doesn't just want to be known as that guy who can heal people or that guy who can cast out demons. He doesn't want to just be uh, a kind of a refreshing change from those poo-faced, self-righteous teachers of the law in the synagogue. He doesn't just want to be a passing fad. Jesus wants to be more than that. Jesus is more than that. The demons know who he is. He's not just some passing fad. He's not just some remarkable healer. He's not just someone that the crowd will be astonished by until they're astonished by the next thing. The demons know who he really is. He's the Holy One of God. He threatens their entire empire, if you like. He threatens their entire, the, the, their entire existence, the entire existence of evil itself. This is who he is. He is Lord of all. And he has come to save and to rescue people from sin and from the dominion of evil. That's the amazing and astonishing thing about Jesus. That as God, he comes into the world to rescue people from the dominion of evil and from sin and from death and to bring them to himself, to restore them completely the way he restored Simon's mother-in-law to full and complete health. That's what he comes to do. That's who he is. He's our Lord and he's worthy of our obedience. He's our saviour who comes in love to rescue us from the dominion of evil and from sin and from death. So if you are amazed at Jesus, and you should be amazed at Jesus, be amazed at him for this reason, for the reason given uh, in this hymn. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus, the Nazarene, and wonder how he could love me, a sinner, condemned, unclean. Be amazed, be astonished at who Jesus is. Allow yourself in reading Mark's gospel to be astonished all over again and to know <coughs> his rescue and his salvation power in your life. God bless.